Now, Sports Talk with Broads. Here's Hunter Brody. What is going on, everyone? Welcome to Sports Talk with Broads. We are broadcasting live from the Manscaped Man Cave. Get 20% off and free shipping with the code BROD at manscaped.com. Look, today it's week three coming up, so we have to discuss what's going on in the betting world. And there's no better way to check in on the analytics, to check in on all the trends, to look at all the sharp money. There's no better way than utilizing BetQL. I have been looking through everything they have to offer over the last couple of weeks, and I've been cashing in left and right. Now, I won't lie to you. I've just been following all the sharp money. Okay, all the sharp money. I just go down that road. Whatever it says, I'm I'm putting in. And the beauty of it, I'm cashing out. My wallet's so damn thick. And that's why today we are going to look at what BetQL has to offer. And by the end, you have to, and I mean you have to, go to BetQL.com, use promo code BROADS20, for 20% off of your first payment. Okay, and we also have an NFL weekly pick em pool presented by BetQL where we are giving away weekly prizes. Not only weekly prizes, but a grand prize as well, courtesy of Rosnov Jewelers. It's a championship bracelet. All the information is down below in the description. Make sure you check it all out. It's so valuable. This is all so valuable. All right, so let's look at the NFL picks this week and how I feel about these games. And and now that we're diving into week three, now that we're getting more substance, if you will, you can properly kind of see what teams are. Now, it's only two weeks in. So if a team's 1-1, one 0-2, one, oh it doesn't mean they're done forever and they're toast. But two games under the belt, now you're starting to at least somewhat sense an identity, which helps, you know, picking your teams on Sunday. One o'clock, you're scrolling through around 12 or so, getting in your bets that you like for the one o'clock games. It's the best feeling in the world. Let's kick it off with Buccaneers-Broncos. The Buccaneers are 1-1 one one against the spread, and the Broncos are 2-0 and oh against the spread. Super close when it comes to the public. 52% of the public like the Buccaneers. But let's dive deeper. Let's dive into the pro betting when you look at this matchup. You would think the Buccaneers coming off of a big win, Tom Brady getting more time to really develop with the receivers, get good chemistry with the receivers and just the style of Bruce Arians. This is not Bill Belichick anymore. When you look at the spread, the spread right now is Denver plus five and a half. Sharp money, 89% like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers to cover. Let's be realistic. It's very hard to bet against Tom Brady. He's just one of those individuals where, for the most part, he's able to execute and he is able to get the job done. So no real surprise there. Money line minus 250 Tampa Bay. How about this for a trend? On the money line, Bruce Arians is 23-10 and 10 after allowing six or more yards per play in their previous game over his career. How about this for sharp money? 98% of sharp bettors love Tampa Bay money line. Not that there's a tremendous amount of value there, but if you're willing to go down that road of the money line, minus 250, there is something available for you. I do like them to cover, though. You got Denver right now going through so many injuries. It started with Von Miller. Then you had Sutton happen. Quarterback, it's just a, a, a big mess. It's just blah with Denver at the moment. And, and you would just expect a team like the Tampa Bay Buccaneers with, once again, if you haven't heard me say his name yet, Tom Brady. You would think he would be able to get out on that field and just take care of business. If you're an over-under kind of guy, 
The over-under is set at 42.5. The sharp money is coming in on the under at 77%. And an interesting way to look at this, can you expect Denver to score a lot of points with where they're at? Probably not scoring a bunch of points. So 42.5, if you have Tampa Bay, say score 28 points or so, is Denver going to be able to score enough points for that over to hit? That's a very interesting way to look at things when it comes to this matchup. It is weird seeing Brady in that uniform. I'm not accustomed to it yet, and I don't even know if I ever will be accustomed to it, to be fair. Will anybody? No. It's so weird, but uh, hey, I'm, I'm rooting for him. Patriots, Raiders. The Patriots are 1-1 one one against the spread. The Raiders are 2-0 and oh against the spread. Patriots favored by 5.5 when it comes to the public. Super close once again. 51% of the public against the spread is on the New England Patriots. This Raiders team, what are they? Coming off of an emotional win. You got John Gruden dancing in the locker room, right? The Patriots coming off of an emotional loss in Seattle. Coming down to the goal line play where Cam Newton was stuffed. Let's dive into some trends against the spread. Bill Belichick is 34 and 15 after following 30 points or more last game while coaching in New England. So keep that in your mind. Sharp money against the spread. 77% of the pros like the New England Patriots. Heading over to the money line. Bill Belichick is 140 and 31 in games played on turf while coaching New England. Once again, 77% of sharp money on New England. Are people not buying into John Gruden? Are individuals not buying into Derek Carr? Josh Jacobs up in the air at the moment. He was getting banged up in that Monday night football game against the New Orleans Saints. So we don't know if he's going to be playing yet. That definitely plays a role. I guess it's one of those, look, you just don't bet against Bill Belichick, Cam Newton right now. I do like New England more. And maybe people are just falling in love with the 2-0 start from the Raiders. Are they really that great of a football team? Or is this just a nice start? I don't know. I just don't know what to expect out of this Raider squad. You got the tight end, Waller, who's making a name for himself. Very exciting story, without a doubt. I remember him, if I remember correctly, during the the Hard knock series that they had. The whole Antonio Brown mess and the helmet. And, oh, man, was that a riot. When it comes to the over-under, 47 is the number. 75% of sharp money coming in at the under. So keep an eye out on the New England Patriots. Five and a half. I like them Patriots. I really do. Coming off of a loss in Seattle. You're talking about Bill Belichick right now. He's still in that category of I can't bet against this man. I'm leaning Patriots. Chargers, Panthers. Chargers favored by six and a half. Chargers are 2-0 and against the spread, while you have the Panthers 0-2 against the spread. Six and a half is pretty damn hefty. 57% of the public are betting on the Panthers to cover that spread. Oh, man, I, I was coming into the season, I thought the Panthers would be competitive, maybe not great, but competitive, I didn't think they'd be as bad as maybe some expected. But through the first couple of weeks, you, you can just sense that they might be going down a road of a very long season. 69% of sharp money like the, the Chargers to cover. Now, here's where it gets interesting. Money line. There's some value on the Carolina Panthers. And 76% of sharp bettors are coming in with... The Carolina Panthers. Carolina are 5-13 and 13 in all line games over the last two years. You have a whole new regime in play. Matt Rule's in place. Teddy Bridgewater here. So a lot has changed when it comes to, you know, the context of this team. There's value there. All I'm going to say is there is value there with Carolina if you think they're going to find a way to maybe pull it out against the Chargers. This is a game I probably stay away from. You have Herbert. Herbert was intriguing after the whole Tyrod Taylor debacle. Holy hell. I just don't like the 6.5. The 6.5 scares me. 
And I don't know if I'm confident enough in Carolina as a whole. Personally, this is a game where I probably stay away from because I can't get a true sense. The over-under is at 43 and a half. The under seems to be uh, where the pro money is going. Chiefs Ravens, Monday night, which by the way is going up against an NBA playoff game, which is absolutely wild. It would be game six of Lakers Nuggets if it even gets to game six. It's just crazy to think about. You know, we talked about all these games being on at the same time and how awesome it'll be. I'm not going to lie to you. To some degree, it's not what I really envisioned it to be. The fact that I'll be watching Chiefs Ravens over that game. Now I got a three TV system, okay? So I'll still have it on, but it's not the same. Like the NBA, it's losing its vibe, and we're in the conference finals because, well, football is king, without a doubt. Chiefs plus three and a half on the road going to Baltimore. Ravens 2 0 against the spread. Chiefs. 1-1 1-1 one one against the spread. And they're coming off of a victory against the Chargers. Needed 50-yard bombs from their kicker. 55% of public bets like the Kansas City Chiefs. It's hard to... Uh, see, this is what's crazy, right? You have the Chiefs as underdogs. The Chiefs as underdogs. I don't care who they're playing against. That's so hard to turn down. Let's dive into what the sharp money thinks. Oh, well, how about this? 73% of the pro bets like themselves, the Chiefs, plus three and a half. Here is a trend for you. John Harbaugh is 77 and 56 in games played on a grass field while coaching Baltimore. Money line. Now it's starting to get a little closer. 67% like Kansas City, 33 like Baltimore. Baltimore is favored by 190. Damn, this is going to be such a good game. This game is going to be so damn electric. Lamar Jackson, Pat Mahomes, Tyreek Hill, Andy Reid, John Harbaugh. It's going to be unreal. This game is going to be sick. I can't wait. It's so hard for me to turn down something like the Chiefs at plus three and a half. Now, that's no knock on Baltimore. It's just saying you can get such a talented team, such an unreal team as dogs at three and a half. I know how good Baltimore is, and and I'm not going to lie. Right now, today, as I speak about the two teams, do the Ravens look more dominant? Maybe, but the Chiefs as three and a half dogs, damn, I feel I'm leaning that way. I really do. I feel I'm leaning that way. Browns, Redskins, Browns favored by a touchdown. Now, they're 0-2 against the spread, while Washington is 1-1. 53% of the public like the Redskins. For the most part, when it comes to the public bets, it's been around 50, uh, you know, 52, 48, 51, 49, 57, 43. Nothing too crazy yet when it comes to the public bets. Sometimes, you know, you see that extreme 80, 20, 70, 30. For the most part throughout these games, it's been pretty damn close. Cleveland Browns, 64% of sharp bettors like the Cleveland Browns by the touchdown. Here's another game where I just think the spread, I just don't trust the Browns. Am I going to sit here today and go, you know what? I trust the Cleveland Browns to win by a touchdown. Now, they might. And the last time I bet against the Browns, I put the Bengals and I got them plus six and they had a backdoor cover super late. I was jumping up and down, going crazy, right? Yeah, let's go backdoor cover. Nothing better than that feeling. The Browns are still the Browns and you see them be the Browns. You see the wonky plays where you're laughing going, really? They really do it like this consistently? This organization always seems to way to lose games and have these crazy weird things happen them throughout. So with that being said, it's like the nature of the Browns, something scares me about them. Ron Rivera is 1-6 after allowing 17 points or more in the first half in two straight games over his career. That's something to keep note of. 
When it comes to the money line, though, the Cleveland Browns is also the, the team that is getting a lot of love. Over under 45, it looks like pounding the over is the way to go in this matchup. But um, I don't know. It's, you look at that Redskins team, can they score a lot of points? It's not like Dwayne Haskins is some phenomenal talent. It's not like they have these insane weapons. Yes, they have Terry McLaurin, and, and Gibson is intriguing, but you know he's not to that level yet. Can they score that many points? I'm just letting you know where the sharp money's going. And when I talk about BetQL, and I'm giving you this information on some of these football games, there's something to be said about where all the pro action is. You know, they do this for a living for a reason. Here's one that is wild to me. So this opened up around six or seven points or so. The Colts are now favored by 11 and a half points. This Jets team is a joke. They're a mess. They're garbage. The Colts are 1-1 one and one against the spread. The Jets are 0-2. Oh this is just a number, though, that scares me. 52% of public bets like the Colts. Now, this is what I said. That spread scares the hell out of me. It's so hefty. At this point, 11 and a half, that's so many damn points. This isn't college football. And I know the Jets seem to have no clue what they're doing. Adam Gase is a nightmare. Sam Darnold doesn't really have many weapons, and it's not like he's playing well. Le'Veon Bell, that whole problem where he claims he shouldn't be on the IR, the hamstring, whatever the case may be, they are a joke. But 11 and a half points is just so much, and that's why 65% of sharp money like the New York Jets. Now, when you go to the money line, the New York Jets are 7-16 and 16 against conference opponents over the last three years. Well, that's because they flat out stink. 55% of sharp money like the Indianapolis Colts on the money line at minus 610. 45% like the Jets, and, and clearly that's just a whole value perspective. Pounding the under is a heavy, 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 heavy percentage at 95%. The number is set at 44. I guess it's something similar if, if you want to go down the road of like, why? Why would you go with the under? Are the Jets going to be able to score that many points? Probably not. And are the Colts going to be scoring 40 points? Probably not. So with that being said, you would think maybe the under is in play. Lions, Cardinals. Are you ready to believe in the Cardinals? Are you ready to believe in that hype of Kyler Murray, DeAndre Hopkins? Well, the Arizona Cardinals are 2-0 against the spread. The Lions are 0-2. Matt Patricia, I talk about Adam Gase and how he seems to have no clue and no identity as a head coach. Matt Patricia, wow, I would hate to be a Detroit Lions fan. He, he is terrible. It's that simple. Just to keep it as simple as it needs to be, he is terrible and doesn't have a clue. Here's where the jump happens with the public. 72% of the public like the Arizona Cardinals. Right now, the spread is at five and a half. They're 2-0 and oh right now. Do you believe? Do you believe in this Cardinals team? Do the professionals believe in this Cardinals team? Well, 57% of them do. 43% like the Lions. It's just hard for me to justify ever betting money on the Lions, whether it's to cover or to actually win the game. You're telling me I got to put my cash into the Detroit Lions? There's just no way I can tell myself that that's the road I am going to choose. The money line, minus 250, 92% like the Cardinals. Matt Patricia is 9-24 and in all games while coaching in Detroit. So what does that tell you? He's probably going to get outcoached. Am I going out on a limb? I like Matthew Stafford. I do. But when you play for the Lions, you fail. When you play for the Lions, you lose. It's crazy to think of the head coaching change that they made when they made it. The Bill Belichick tree. Guess what? It's not very successful. It's no Andy Reid tree. And I wonder if there's something to that. Maybe he hides a lot. 
I wouldn't be shocked. I wouldn't be stunned if you have the head coach over there in New England hiding some things from the coaching staff so he can keep all the secrets to himself because something's not adding up. There's a reason why Andy Reid's tree is so successful and Bill Belichick, these guys leave and you don't really get too much out of them. Packer Sage 820. Public bets 50-50, split right down the middle. One and one the Saints are against the spread. Drew Brees not having a great night on Monday Night Football. Michael Thomas not there. How does that really impact this football team? Well, you lose Michael Thomas and you saw the difference in that offense. The Packers, underdogs on the road. Plus three. Sean Payton, 34-17 and 17 off a non-conference game while coaching the Saints, 63% of sharp money, like the Green Bay Packers as dogs. 37% head the other way. Moneyline, New Orleans Saints are 11-2 when playing with six or less days rest over the last two years. 63% of sharp money like the Green Bay Packers on the money line. This Packers team. If the philosophy of the Green Bay Packers front office was let's piss off Aaron Rodgers, you might have something there. Now, I do want to check real quick because I felt like I saw something about Devontae Adams. And I just want to see Devontae Adams' injury. Okay. I want to see if there's an update on it. Uh, Still not practicing Thursday. Does this mean Devontae Adams isn't serious? Where are we here with Devontae Adams' injury? I mean, let's see. Uh, I, I guess I don't really see too much on what's going on. One, one more, one more Google, I'll Google search it here, actually. It's a little easier. Um, I mean, that's a big loss. With, without a doubt, that's a big loss for the Green Bay Packers. Fantasy updates, Devontae Adams, Devontae Adams, uh, Packers update on, st- I can't believe I'm diving this deep into it, but at this point I'm very committed to it. Matt LaFleur told reporters that Adams wanted to return to action against the Lions, which led many people to believe that he'd be fine for week three. However, the Pro Bowl wideout hasn't practiced at all this week. Adams did not participate in Wednesday or Thursday's practice. Uh, Adams was reportedly a non-participant in practice in Friday as well. Okay, that's all of the knowledge we have. And that was on September 25th. So that was Friday. Okay, well. Keep an eye out on Devontae Adams. Over, under is set at 53. The over at 72%. Coming in with the sharp money. That game is going to be unreal. I want to see if Drew Brees steps up. I want to see if he's going to be able to, you know, look at last week and go, that's not me. I don't care how old I am. I don't care what the people are saying. That's not me. And he goes out there and duels it out with Aaron Rodgers. You got great games with that one in the Chiefs-Ravens game. <laughs> Whoa. And here I am as an Eagles fan going to sit down at 1 o'clock to watch an 0-2 Eagles team play an 0-2 Cincinnati Bengals game. Yeah, I'm super thrilled for that. Giants 49ers. Giants are underdogs at home by 3.5. So the 49ers so banged up. Jimmy Garoppolo, right? You don't know what's going on with Kittle at the moment. Moster, all over the place. Bosa, they have been annihilated by the injury bug. 50-50 on the public bet, and they're both 1-1 one one against the spread so far this season. No Saquon Barkley for the Giants, though, and I think that is truly killer. That's going to make it so much harder for Daniel Jones. Saquon Barkley definitely... He just draws so much attention that that allows Daniel Jones to have more room to operate with, whether it's just actually running the ball or play action is in play. He does so much. He's such a weapon that I don't know if the Giants are going to be able to overcome that. Even though the 49ers are extremely banged up, I just don't know if I can trust the New York Giants. The Giants are 1-11 as an underdog while at home over the last three years. If you look at this spread, 60% of the sharp betters are taking the New York Giants. So 60-40, pretty damn close when it comes to the professional betters. 
Trust your gut on this one. That's all I'm trying to say. Money line, 55-45 in favor of the Giants. The San Francisco 49ers are 8-1 and one in road line games over the last two seasons. But that is somewhat thrown out the window based off of the quarterback, the stud defensive player. Tight end, banged up. Running back, banged up. Hurting. How about that run by Mostert last week? What was it, 80 yards on the Giants taking it to the house? Electric. I have him on my fantasy team as well, which now that sucks. I have Marlon Mack and Mostert. Now they're all out. Now I got to file in other guys. I think at this point I do have Miles Sanders, which is big, but my my second running back at this point because of all the injuries is uh, Singletary. Yeah, probably not ideal, huh, Broats? Yeah, definitely not. It's it's unbelievable. When you go to the total, over-unders at 42, 77% like the under. Joe Judge, is he going to get his first win against Kyle Shanahan and a brutal 49ers team at the moment when it comes to those injuries? They got hit the hardest. We actually had on 97.3 ESPN this week, we have him on every week, Dr. Kevin McHale, who has been a doctor throughout the NFL, and he like alluded to, you know, these players are just so damn explosive that they're essentially like ripping their ACLs. We talk about the lack of preseason, the lack of training camp, and I'm not saying that didn't have any impact on everything that's occurring, but he was talking about like these players are so damn athletic quick and their transition is so unbelievable. It's not realistic to move the way that they do that they're essentially like tearing their body apart just because of how explosive they are as athletes in the year that they are in now like it's based off the training and and everything we have now to ad, like the advanced technology for these athletes and how they train that's one of the big reasons why this is occurring and it's just so wild to think you know that's why titans vikings vikings at home underdogs two and a half points both teams are zero and two against the spread 69 percent of the public is going in the titans direction you would think though the vikings would pull their head out of their ass at some point right there's no way they're going to be this atrocious maybe they should have thought about keeping digs i don't know i'm just pitballing here mike zimmer is 47 and 23 against the spread in games played on the turf while coaching in minnesota 77 percent of sharp bets like minute, uh, like the Tennessee Titans, excuse me, as the favorite on the road, two and a half points going to the money line. Ooh, Tennessee Titans minus 145, 91 percent of the pro bets love the Tennessee Titans. Mike Vrabel six and zero off a win against the division rival while coaching in Tennessee. Love Vrabel, love Vrabel, hand in the dirt kind of guy. In practice, he's taking reps kind of guy without pads. He's putting his hand in the dirt, and he's doing it. Players love to play for him. I love Rabel. I'm a Rabelsman. He's one of my favorite coaches. If I could pick some coaches to play for in the league, if I was in the NFL, he's at the top of the list. Big Rabel guy. Over, under, 50 is the number. Under is more likely the way to go. All right, we got to the Bengals-Eagles. We did it. We got to the Bengals and the Eagles. The spread, four and a half. Birds are favored. 52% of the public like the Eagles. So pretty damn close, 52-48. Carson Wentz has been a nightmare. Miles Sanders has been a stud. Will Doug Peterson commit to the run game against a team that you should destroy them when it comes to the trenches? Offensive line for the Birds should be able to take care of business against the Bengals. Now let's flip it around. Defensive line for the Eagles should be able to wax that offensive line of the Bengals, eliminating maybe Joe Mixon's game, eliminating maybe Joe Burrow getting comfortable in the pocket. Now, Zach Taylor, maybe he looked at Sean McVay's tape and goes, hold on, there's a way to attack these linebackers. There's a way to maybe utilize Joe Burrow getting out of the pocket to help him out a bit, to beat this defense, to beat Jim Schwartz's scheme. No Jalen Rieger, big loss for the Eagles and their wide receiving core. Doug Peterson said J.J. Ortega-Whiteside is going to be getting more reps. So whoop-de-damn-do. 
12 personnel set probably will be very hefty. Let's dive into the numbers. I'm a little nervous to see where the pro money's headed. Doug Peterson is 10-1 and off two or more consecutive overs while coaching Philadelphia. The spread is 4.5. This is close. This is close. 54-46 in favor of the Cincinnati Bengals to cover when it comes to the pro money. That's close, though. I would feel a lot worse if it was like 90-10 or 80-20, right? It makes me feel a little bit better. Money line, 52-48 in favor of the Cincinnati Bengals. Doug Peterson, 17-4 after playing a game where 50 total points or more were scored while coaching for the Philadelphia Eagles. Over-unders, 47.5. Over, 91%. So, look, I look at this and I go, all right, look, it, it doesn't look too bad from a professional betting standpoint for the Eagles. It's close. I guess, I guess that's actually a negative because coming into this season, if you told me the Eagles are at where they're at now and it's like, hey, 50-50 or, you know, close, 52-48, right, if we're talking those numbers against the Cincinnati Bengals, it should be a no-brainer that the Eagles take care of business. It's not like the Bengals have been getting blown out. They've been hanging in there. The 0-2s feel different. 1-0-2 is, holy hell, you lost to the Washington football team? And Carson Wentz has been playing like what? And the other is, damn, look at Joe Burrow. He's intriguing. He's fun. He's got an arm. He's got a cannon. He, dropped back. he drops back a lot. And for how many times he's actually dropped back... You can argue, you know, for the lack of interceptions, he's done a hell, a hell of a job. Cowboys, Seahawks, this game. I'm looking through some of these games, and damn, do we have a phenomenal schedule on Sunday. 2-0 and against the spread is the Seattle Seahawks. 0-2 against the spread is the Dallas Cowboys. 59% of the public like the Seahawks, at home by five points. I actually like the other way, I'm not going to lie. Mike McCarthy is 14-4 and four off a of no cover, where the team won as a favorite over his career. 45% of sharp money on Dallas, 55 on Seattle. So pretty damn split. It's going to be a tough one. Money line, 65% of sharp money on Seattle. Pete Carroll is 14-2 and two after allowing six or more yards per play in two consecutive games while coaching the Seattle Seahawks. It's hard to bet against Russell Wilson. I know Dak Prescott and the Cowboys are coming off of this emotional win. Really crazy win. The Atlanta Falcons just blew it. They are known to be a dumpster fire and losing in all these crazy ways. It's hard to bet against Seattle, but I truly feel deep down, and we'll see how it plays out. But I feel like the Dallas Cowboys getting five points is something I need to look at. It would be different if you go into Seattle and it was packed and it was loud and it was crazy and it was hectic and they're screaming people all over the place and it was just unbelievable. It's one of those atmospheres where you can't hear a damn thing. But it's not going to be that way. And I look at this Dallas team and I look at last week and I think that's a spark plug. I think that was a win that changes their season around. Yeah, week two, I'm saying that they had a, a game that changed the season around for them, and I don't think that that's that ridiculous to say. Texan Steelers. This Texans team, did they have a brutal start to the season in terms of their opponents? And then, hey, here's week three knocking on the door, and you got the Pittsburgh Steelers. 58% of the public like the Pittsburgh Steelers at Four, minus four at home. Close, very close. Sharp money, 53% like the Steelers to cover 47 like Houston. When you talk about the money line, 
Pittsburgh Steelers, minus 210, 61 like Pittsburgh. Mike Tomlin is 35-6 and six in home games where the total is between 42.5 and, and 49 points while in Pittsburgh. Over-under is set at 45.5, 81% of sharp bettors like the over. This is going to be an interesting matchup. I think Bill O'Brien is a horrendous general manager. I don't think he's a very good head coach either. He has made very poor decisions. And Deshaun Watson without DeAndre Hopkins, look, any quarterback is going to struggle and not going to look as good when you take away a stud receiver like DeAndre Hopkins. A dude, he can go at, go out there and casually get you 100 receiving yards and a couple touchdowns. Take that away from any quarterback, and that quarterback will probably have a harder time utilizing his weapons, right? Isn't that pretty damn obvious? So you look at what Bill O'Brien did. It's like, dude, you're a joke. And they have a good chance here now to start the season off 0-3 going to play Big Ben, who seems to be getting more rhythm every single day as he continues to play. As he continues to get more reps, he seems to be more comfortable with all of the different surgeries that he had to get. Bears-Falcons. Falcons are favorite at home by three points. Bears are 2-0. and Falcons are 0-2. And the Falcons are, are favorites by three points. 68% of the public like... The Falcons, now does that say people don't believe in Mitch Trubisky and the Bears? Or does that say people look at the Falcons and go, you are better than this. You have Calvin Ridley. You have Julio Jones. You have Matt Ryan. Now, the coaching staff seems to suck and collapse all the time, but there's no way they're this bad, right? Well, let's look at what the professionals say. The Chicago Bears, by the way, are 5-13 and in all line games over the last two years against the spread 72% like the Atlanta Falcons with the three points. Going to the money line, 57% like Chicago on the money line. 43 like the Chicago Bears. Now, the over-under is going to be interesting. Real quick, though, money line trend. Dan Quinn, 10-5 and five after allowing 25 points or more in two straight games. I cannot believe, I cannot believe that they actually lost that game against the Dallas Cowboys. Mind-blowing. So hard. Almost impossible. Yet so is blowing that 28-3 lead in the Super Bowl. No? Yes. They continue to do it. I almost appreciate how pathetic it's been from an Atlanta Falcons standpoint. The total is at 47. Now, this is close. 51% like the under, 49 like the over. So a lot of mixed Thoughts, a lot of mixed emotions with that over under. I always find it hard though to justify an over under. Like when you, the way I like to describe it is when you look at teams play, right? You can get a sense of the Pittsburgh Steelers. You can get a sense of the Texans. You can get a sense of the Eagles. You can get a sense of these teams. The over under, while yes, you say, well, this team has a good defense. This team has a good defense. This team has a good offense. This team has a good defense. Like you can see that, and then that'll help you justify it over under. I just find the over under so much harder to, to really get a sense of compared to picking who's going to win and who's going to cover. I find it hard to dive deep into those numbers. Last game, I have not looked at yet. Rams-Bills, close spread. Bills at home by one point. 54% of the public like the Rams with the one point. Rams are 2-0 and against the spread. The Bills are 1-1. One and one. When we dive deeper into some of the numbers, the Rams are 10-2 and two when playing with six or less days rest over the last two years. 55% like the Rams. 45 like the Bills. I mean, it's a one-point spread. That is super close. Sean McDermott is 7-1 and one after allowing 99 or less rushing yards in two straight games. On the money line, 67% like the Rams. I like the Rams. I really do. I love what Sean McVay is doing with this offense. The flow of the offense, running the football with this offense, has changed the identity, and it has allowed Jared Goff to play this different role where he's always been somewhat of a manager. Like, he's not just a game manager. He's more than that, but he does a good job at managing the game. Now that they're running the football 30 plus carries, 40 carries, they are really pounding the rock. That opens up the play action to a whole nother level, and it's just giving 
Jared Goff this whole new life to him where the offense is flowing. But the Bills, look, they're they're a hell of a football team, and it'll be interesting to see how that is going to work against a squad like the Bills. They waxed Jim Schwartz. Jim Schwartz's scheme got literally destroyed. The over-under is 46.5, the over coming in at 64%. We have some great football games this week. I can't wait to dive into all of them. NFL action is so much fun. Remember, down below in the description, you can find the NFL weekly pick and pull that we're doing. Weekly prizes are being given away. On top of that, a grand prize, courtesy of Rosnob Jewelers. Championship bracelet. Get yourself in the weekly pick and pull. And, and use promo code BRODES20 at betql.com, you will get all of these numbers access right to your phone on the BetQL app and in all sports. Yes, we ran down the NFL week, but what about college football, NBA, baseball playoffs are ready to start coming up in action. There's so much to dive into. And all these numbers, it's beautiful. I have been cashing out, no lie, I've been cashing out so much following a lot of these sharp bets and the sharp better report because look I, I trust the pros I trust the pros with where they're going and all these trends data it's so useful it's so beneficial you don't even realize how much is involved in the sports betting world until you get your hands on this type of information once again promo code broads 20 20 percent off of your first payment at betql.com you can also download the app thank you all so much for listening good luck Use the promo code, and I will see you next time.